Buongiorno e benvenuti. My name is Giovanna and I welcome you all to my kitchen on the cliff. Today we're going to make a wonderful springtime dish which is uh, so beloved in Sicily. It's called a frittedda. This is three vegetables that come to more or less at the same time. And they are peas, fava beans, and artichokes. We have fresh artichokes. We're using frozen fava beans and we're using frozen tiny tender peas. And a word about the peas. The first time I asked my husband to buy peas in the supermarket, I said, please buy tiny tender peas. And he thought I was joking. No, no, we want tiny tender peas because the tiny tender peas are the first crop, the very, very tiny peas. They haven't developed all the flour and, and the consistency of peas that people don't like. All right, this is a, a, a very good recipe for those of you who may have some of these things in the freezer, particularly peas, which uh, I think many people do keep in the freezer for the reason that I've said, because they're just the best. To accompany the frittedda, we're going to use fried bread, which is always delicious. I mean, you can accompany anything with fried bread, a piece of cheese and a glass of wine, and you have a, a great snack or a great meal. So we're going to start with the dough for the fried bread because that has to rise. And so while the bread is rising, we will do the other things. We'll prepare the vegetables. So we start by measuring three cups of flour, all-purpose flour. One, two, and three. We are going to add one teaspoon of instant yeast and we're going to mix it. Now, the next thing I'm going to add is the water and the olive oil. I have three quarter cups of warm water. I'm going to add one quarter of a cup of olive oil and that will make an even eight ounces. No reason to use two measuring cups. You just measure three quarters of a cup of uh, water, quarter of a cup of olive oil, and you have it. So now, here's something that I have always done because that's what, what my grandmother taught me, and that is, that you should not mix the salt and the yeast immediately. And so I always take the flour and, and uh, the water or whatever else is liquid that goes into a recipe, right? I'll put it in, here it goes. And I'm going to use, this is a wonderful tool for doing a rough dough. So I've just made a rough dough. You see, it's not smooth and elastic yet because it hasn't been kneaded. And I'm going to cover it and let it sit for 15 minutes. Then I'll add the salt and finish kneading it. Hey Siri, please set the timer for 15 minutes. 15 minutes, counting down. Thank you. We cover it and we wait 15 minutes. Meanwhile, <laughs> we can start preparing the artichokes. Anytime we work with artichokes, we use lemon, we use uh, acidulated water. And that is so that the artichokes won't oxidize. This is one of my favorite tools in the kitchen because it doesn't require much strain and then you really get every last bit of juice out. And now I'm just going to put this in the water as well. First, we're going to remove the outer leaves and discard them. My husband who didn't grow up with artichokes <laughs> always wonders how anybody discovered that these things were edible, since you can't eat most of it. And the most important thing that you have to get out is the choke in the middle. So now we'll cut off the leaves. This is not to be thrown out. What you do is you peel it and you, and you cook it, and it's delicious too. So you just take the outer skin. The core is edible, now, just like the core of the broccoli stem. We never throw those out. Usually, uh, whoever cooks the broccoli gets the treat. Okay, I'm going to now cut it in quarters. Okay, there's the choke. So we cut away the choke. If you cut these in quarters, it's very, very simple to take out the choke. This is absolutely not edible, so you, you have to get it all out. 
We're not going to cut these with a knife, but we're going to pull them off so we're sure that all we have left is that little center that uh, is so good to eat and not the leaves that are very, very tough. Wow, this one's purple. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Here's a kind of separation, so cut it at the base of, the, of these pretty purple leaves. You cut off the stem, peel it later. We cut it in fours. It seems as if these uh, little jobs are endless, but you know, it's not endless. While you do this, you have a chance to think and reflect. So here we are. We're going to add a teaspoonful of salt. So now I'm bringing it all together. Now, why do we wait this 15 minutes? Because we want the yeast to start uh, working. And in 15 minutes, the yeast has already started working. So now that you add the salt, you're not interfering with that. I see this as being a little bit dry. You know, you try to give exact measurements, but it's really not possible to give exact uh, measurements because, you know, it depends on the humidity in the air that particular day. Uh, whether you need more water or more flour. Always add very, very little. You know, if you're going to add water or any other liquid, one tablespoon at a time, because otherwise you take a chance of it being too much and you can't take it out once you put it in. Okay, so we're going to put it back in our bowl with a tiny bit of olive oil on top to keep a crust from forming, and now we're going to cover it. Oh, where did that one come from? Oh, I didn't see it. <laughs> okay, now we cover our dough and we set it aside. Be sure that you get all of that hair off because nothing is less pleasant than eating artichokes and getting the hair in your mouth. You have to pay attention to the details, of course, you know, the devil is in the details. If you don't want to do this, then uh, I would suggest buying the frozen artichoke hearts because all of this has already been done for you. If you have <laughs> any more stamina for doing this left, we'll trim the, the stems. You have to you know, take off the outside and get to the core. Well, this is so small. <laughs> Fave are one of the most nutritious of all the beans. This was a very, very important part of the diet until, really until the 20th century. Once you take off the nose with, the, with a knife, they squeeze out very quickly. Is it worth all the trouble? Yes, it is, it is. Because now these are going to cook for a minute and they're going to be perfect. My maternal grandmother, Nonna Carmela, loved fave, fresh fave so much that when they were in season, she cooked them every day in some form or another. And I asked her once, well, how can you eat the same thing over and over and over again? She said, well, because once they go out of season, I can't have them for a whole year. So I just found out this week that my cousin John, John's mother and sister, came to the United States uh, about six months before he and his father joined them. And for that period, he was living with my grandmother, our grandmother, Carmela. When I said to John that I was making this fritteda, he made a face and he said, no, I wouldn't want to even taste it because I can't stand fave. For the like two months that they were living with my grandmother, he had to suffer a fave in one kind or another every day. So he's not a fan of, uh, of fave. I didn't particularly like them as a child, but I love them now. Well, look, this is absolutely worth it, what we're doing. But once you get into the rhythm of this, it's easy. And then you get your, you know, get your next door neighbor to come over and help you. And you chat while you do this. You know, there, there are ways around tedious work. This is an awful lot of preparation. I understand that. However, the cooking is going to be super fast. We're ready to put together our fritteda. Right, we've poured about a quarter of a cup of olive oil in this pan. Now I'm going to add the garlic. We're going to use two large cloves of garlic because there isn't really much other flavor. You could start this dish with a batuto of onion instead of garlic, but today I feel like doing garlic. So the garlic is beginning to brown, and now we're going to add a goodly amount of nice fresh parsley. 
I mean, I chop directly into the pot. I don't see any reason for dirtying a different dish. You sort of fold it and hold it tight and start chopping. Right? The heat is on low because we never want to burn garlic. Because if you burn garlic, you have to start all over again. We're going to add a cup of water for two reasons. One, you want to stop the cooking of the garlic because we don't want it to get burned. And the other is that we need some water to cook the first vegetable, which is the artichokes. We're going to bring this to a boil, raise the heat. Our water is boiling. We're going to add the artichoke heart. I'm going to add salt. Of course, this is to taste. Pepper. We're going to lower the heat to a simmer, and we're going to cook it for 10 minutes. A few moments later. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put the fava in. I'm going to add another half a cup or so of water. The vegetables don't have to be covered with the water. We're going to bring it back to the boil, and then we're going to add the peas, right? This is boiling now. We're going to add the peas. Beautiful, look how green they are. Mix. Gonna add a little bit more salt. Stir. Hey Siri, please set the timer for five minutes. Five minutes, counting down. Thank you. So while we're making the fritteta, another five minutes, we're going to make our fried bread. So we divide the dough in half and then in quarters, and then we divide each quarter in three. Now you could make these any size you like. You know, you could make them large, you could make them small. Dip it in a little flour, flatten it out, and then we're going to roll it. Our fritada is done, and now we're doing the fry bread. So we pour some olive oil in the pan. This is a griddle pan, so I think we should fit three. That's a, see, lovely color. This is about the easiest thing that you can do. And while it's still hot, we're going to put a little bit of kosher salt on top. The salt is like the salt they put on the wonderful pretzels, you know, the hot pretzels you get in Manhattan. Actually, we should do pretzels one day. Wouldn't that be fun? You know how to make pretzels? Yes. I used to make them when uh, Nicoletta was little. Whenever, you know, when she came home from school with friends, I would either make pretzels or would make some fried bread. So we're celebrating spring with friteda, which is a trio of vegetables that would be in season all at the same time. As I've told you many times, this was cooked with olive oil. So you say, why does it need more olive oil? The reason why it needs more olive oil is that when you cook with olive oil, you lose a lot of flavor. And if you're using a good olive oil, you know, the one that Anne Philomena gave you for your birthday, this is what you use it for. When you're finished at the table, you drizzle a little bit of this lovely, good olive oil, and this is the olive oil you're going to taste in the fritteda. What we have here is a fritteda, a fried bread, and we're accompanying it with a little bit of ricotta salata, which goes with everything, and uh, it's delicious. It's slightly salty, very, very good. So, buon appetito. Happy spring. I love the fried bread. This is lunch, or what we call a spuntino, which means a savory taste of uh, something delicious that could be had any time. You feel like having it at 10 o'clock in the morning with a glass of wine? Sure, why not? <laughs> Thank you for watching. Do remember to subscribe. The peas are snapping in your mouth which is delicious. The fave are soft and creamy, and the artichokes give tremendous amount of flavor to the dish. This is something that is very, very common in Sicily, 
because everybody awaits the time when these things are in season. Ciao, alla prossima volta. Ciao.